I think as lots we can take from the 40s, I think they had a lot more awareness about stuff. They didn't have much stuff. They may do with a lot less because they knew that that there wasn't the value in that. The value that was in people and families and relationships and connections. I think the kindness and the community, everybody pulled together. You know, if you ain't got a bit of butter, somebody would give you a bit of butter, even if they ain't got it. And same with the clothes. Even like childcare, everything, it was just a big community pulled together. And I think if people was like that now, it would be a better place. I think they were like resourceful. So they'd have something basically the smallest thing in the world and they could try and reuse it or um, remake it or something. I think there's quite a few things we could reclaim from the 40s. I think the skills, sewing, knitting, were handed down from grandparents to their children and grandchildren. So there was probably two or three generations in a household um, making things. And I think those skills were used for repairing the existing clothes that they had. And I think they really looked after what they had as well. I think they appreciated what they got more because everything was so scarce. Obviously they had the skills to make their own new clothes, which I think probably very few people have these days. Everybody's a bit self-absorbed now, I think. You know, you go into your house, you shut the door, that's it. Like in them times, it'd be, oh, come round, have a cup of tea, you know, there's more community engagement. Where now, nobody even says hello to anybody in the street. We're looking at it from now with rose-tinted glasses, just picking out the bits that we want to see. And we're picking on the bits that were successful and ignoring all the, all the people that didn't fit into those boxes. So we're only looking at a very small bit of it. Taking that little bit of it then, um, the things that we can take from that are everybody was in the same position, rationing was theoretically for everybody. Those restrictions would in some ways free people up to just get on with doing what they've got to do. Whereas we have so many choices it can be overwhelming, you end up not doing anything. We do tend to throw a lot away, we tend to waste a lot. I suppose being on topic currently I suppose is the plastic thing and plastics weren't around in those days uh, particularly. Um, it was very much a society where you made do and mend Things were, if you like, more recyclable than they are now, less wasteful. They had to make the best of the situation that they were in. So fabrics had several lives, so they may have probably gone from a coat to a coat for a child, may have gone to bits for a blanket. So I think perhaps we should be thinking about that our fabric should have uh, many lives. I think fashion now is too rapid fire. So people are, feel pressure to discard things, to buy something different, to go with a new season or a new look or what's hot. Whereas things changed more slowly then and there was less pressure, I think, when things changed more slowly. Well, they didn't have a throwaway culture, which that's only got us into a lot of trouble and we're kind of starting to try and row back from that now and hoping that we haven't left it too late. I'm not sure we could get it back. We've lost a lot of things. I mean, we're in the pre-packaged society. You can't have exactly what you want. You have a packet of whatever it is you want. And that's the way it works. And I suppose we've become used to that. Uh, but back in the 1940s, you could get virtually anything you wanted in the quantity you wanted. You virtually dictated what it was you wanted. Now, you can do that to some extent today. You do have that choice if you go to a fruit shop, if you go to the butchers and so on. But we tend to go to places like supermarkets where it's all pre-packaged. I think there's an awful lot we can learn from the 1940s and I think we, we probably should. <laughs>